Hi guys, so today we're in Shibuya and we're going to be talking about zone focusing. So if you think zone focusing is unnecessary because there is very high-tech autofocusing these days, you're wrong. Kind of. Um, first, so what is zone focusing? Zone focusing is to pre-focus your camera manually to a certain distance. So today we'll be talking about how to do this, but first let's go through why you want to zone focus first. So in this age of fast autofocus, why do you want to zone focus? I will give you two big reasons why. The first reason we have is ultimate control. Let's say you're a control freak, like me. We want to control what's in focus. As in, do we want the foreground in focus? Do we want the middle ground in focus? Or do we want the background in focus? The next point is that most autofocus points are centered. How do you quickly get subjects which aren't centered in focus then? Zone focusing can resolve this issue even for subjects that are far left or far right or far up or down in your frame and aren't centered, they can quickly snap into focus with zone focusing. The second reason is ultimate speed. Once zone focusing is perfected, it can even be faster than autofocusing. The main reason being, you don't have to half press your shutter button in order for the camera to focus on something. So now that we know why zone focusing is a great skill to have, how do we do this? Well, there's actually a couple ways we can do this, so let me explain. The first and most common way of zone focusing is to set your camera to a focal distance that you are comfortable with. Let's say you like the look of someone or something two meters away. So you set your camera to two meters. Here comes a nice looking lady walking right into your frame. She is two meters away. So you take the photo and she is in focus. The beauty of zone focusing though is that again, if I set the camera's focal distance to two meters, I get everything from 1.2 meters on the close side to close to infinity in focus. So if this beautiful young lady tends to walk here and back from 1.2 meters to infinity, she's pretty much going to be in focus anyways. Again, keep in mind that the things that I provided you and the warnings will affect depth of field. A very general tip to good zone focusing is to try to sway in and out of the zone that you'll have in focus. So let your own body do the trick. The next topic is hyperfocal distance. This is a little bit complicated, but let's just say hyperfocal distance is the distance or setting where you can maximize your focusing range. In a hyperfocal distance setting, anything from let's say x meters on the close side to infinity should be in focus. This is easier to calculate or see when you have a distance scale like this camera. And here's my little surprise. The focusing distance of 2 meters on my camera was pretty much the hyperfocal distance because everything from 1.2 meters to close to infinity is in focus. To find out the hyperfocal distance of your camera or your lens, refer to the distance scale that your lenses have or look up hyperfocal distance charts online. Now, point to note, nothing is 100% accurate. You can find hyperfocal distance charts online and they're not really accurate, so to say. And you can even look at the distance scale on my camera and this generally says that everything from about 1.2 meters to infinity is in focus. This also isn't 100% accurate. However, the beauty of this application in candid photography is that you really don't mind or you really shouldn't care about everything perfectly being in focus. As long as a lot of things are generally in focus, you should be okay. And obviously, the closer you are to 2 meters in this setting, the sharper your subjects will be. The last example I have is a hybrid method, and in this method, it's kind of like hyperfocal, but you have two settings instead of one. Now, this is a mixed technique, and it's something that I learned from a video that I saw um, by Matt Stewart. I use something called hyperfocal distance, um, which a lot of rangefinder uh, photographers use. Um, this gets a little bit complicated, so bear with me. Now, there's a couple reasons why this hybrid method is very valuable. First of all, getting to learn zone focusing is amazing, but if you keep on using the same distance, it limits you to one look. 
and you're concentrating on subjects only at a certain distance. And how do we get subjects that are close and focus? This is why it's great to have another setting apart from the hyperfocal distance, which is usually from mid to far range. You get to focus on something closer. So in the settings that I use in my camera for this mixed approach, I have my hyperfocal distance for f11, which is approximately set to about 1.2 meters to infinity, which is in focus. And the other setting that I use commonly is from about 0.5 meters to one meter being in focus. So this is my close setting. So again, my close setting is for F11 is 0.5 meters to about one meter being in focus. And the far setting, which is the hyperfocal distance, being about 1.2 meters to infinity in focus. A tip for this close setting is that you want to set a distance that is close, but still covers most distances not covered by hyperfocal distance. Also keep in mind to use the same f-stop as much as possible. And guys, this requires a lot of practice. I've shot hundreds of rolls of film uh, by this method. And what I did was to remember my finger position on the lens or lens tab. Okay, we're through that now. Thank you. Um, so guys, don't forget to practice. Don't forget to subscribe to me so I can prosper. And don't forget to hit that like button on this video. So thank you. See you guys in the next video. Sayonara. Hi. <laughs>